um, unfortunately, because um, they have, the US Fed has been raising rates aggressively over the last year, the price of those assets have dropped. And so there's a shortfall for the amount of deposits that they've taken and how much these bonds are now worth. What's the breaking point, Niall? How, how does it snap? Because presumably th th these, we, we possibly sail close to these sort of scenarios more often than the average Joe like me realises. So what, what actually yeah. pushes it to breaking point? Well, I think there was basically, um, there's, there's certain categories where they have to basically provide uh, instant liquidity in these banks. Yeah. And the instant liquidity had a shortfall of two billion. And so once that happens, then it's people start on. getting nervous. And I think Peter Field come out, who's a big name in the tech startup industry, he basically come out and said, get your money out now. And obviously when someone says that, everybody panics. Mark Maguire, Managing Partner at Paragon Trading Partners. Thank you. I actually understand about 95% of, of, of what's gone on there, which is 95% more than I did before it started. Although, um, uh, obviously, the British end of it remains something we must keep an eye on. It's 12.57 very nearly. I can squeeze in one more call. Another junior doctor. Robert, what made you pick up the phone? Hi, James. Um, well, Robert. the reason that I picked up the phone is because you asked how it feels um, to be striking. And I, yeah. I think most people would, would think that we would, uh, all of us would, would be doing with a heavy heart. And I think that would be the normal reaction. But the problem we have is that what lever is left to pull? That is, that is the real, yeah. that's, that's missed. Because if every year yeah. there is a below inflation pay cut, essentially, um, and you say to your health secretary that that's concerning every year and nothing happens. And then for the last just keep six doing. months, just keep and doing. keep doing it. Exactly. Just keep doing it. Just keep doing it. And then for the last six months, uh, every month, the DMA have contacted the health secretary of the time to say, um, we're really concerned that this is the way it's heading. This is the flow. We need to meet up and, and talk. And they just don't reply. And then yeah. you are at a situation where it's like, well, well let's pull the lever because there, there's do? nothing left to do. I, I get that. I, what I don't get is this, and I don't know that I want to ask this question. What happens if they just sit it out? What happens if the government just... I mean, what happens to the NHS, let alone this particular industrial action? And I, I've asked you that question with a minute to go, Robert, so you can thank me later. <laughs> well, I know you're, you're, you're reticent to kind of uh, sometimes go down this path. Of the kind of no, you, you, you fill your boots. You're, it's your world, not mine. Well, the deliberate path to kind of privatization, privatization by, by the back door, essentially. Mm. Um, and um, but if, if if I mean, it was one of uh, one of the five key pledges Sunak said was sorting the NHS out. Yeah. And they always say that. Of course. So if it is that high up your priority list, how would you possibly let this happen on your watch? It, 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 those two things are completely incongruent. Well, with that each could other. be a topic tomorrow. I might, I might do that yeah, on the show. Can I give you an analogy, quickly? Please, yeah, it's a very good. If, if twelve years ago, um, uh, 12, 12 years ago, we had uh, make, make, turn that into a chef's um, amazing recipe, right? And this restaurant makes this amazing recipe every year. You remove one ingredient. You know, your management removes one ingredient every year, but you keep getting held to the same standard. Uh, yeah. Twelve years later, you were there with a a pot of boiling water and some salt and you are still held to that same standard of that amazing Michelin star um, kind of uh, dish you used to produce and that equals burnout. I don't know where you got the idea that torturous analogies have any role at all to play on this program. Robert. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that, was, that was very helpful. Many thanks indeed. and good luck. I mean it's hard to know what to say to these people who dedicate their working life to looking after the rest of us. How, how do you possibly repay that debt ever? You can't, can you? That's it from me for another day. We'll do it again tomorrow from 10. Don't forget you can download this programme and indeed any other LBC show on Catch Up at Go Global Player. Also rewind and pause when listening. Download Global Player for free from your app store or head to globalplayer.com. Tom Sorbrick with you at four. Sheila Fogarty with you now. Thank you, James. Uh, did you take a side? You know what I'm talking about. The BBC and Barry Lineker. As you know, probably I did 25 years as a news journalist and presenter at the BBC, so was rightly at the time fully bound by impartiality, working with an organisation paid for by taxpayers. And it's actually quite easy when you know how and you exercise those muscles. I can see, though, how the BBC got into this mess with Lineker. I still think they should have been able to do it sooner than a review of guidelines. <laughs>
address that and just bring it back to the previous level it was at. People wanting to visit an Essex County Council tip now need a prior booking. The new system, which requires an appointment made online or by phone, has been introduced on a trial basis to combat congestion. BBC Essex listener Robin is among those casting doubts on the need for the scheme. Why introduce all this bureaucracy when there doesn't seem to be a particular problem? I just summer on a Saturday and Sunday, perhaps there might be congestion. But I rarely have ever had a, um, a congestion at Mount Nessie or Brentwood. Well, the Conservative County Councillor responsible for waste, Malcolm Buckley, said the booking system needed to be introduced across the board. The view that we've taken, and we've drawn on experience of other councils as well, which have implemented a similar system, is that if we were to put controls only on our busiest sites, what would happen is the visits would divert to other sites and they would tend to be the smaller sites where the congestion is even worse if you get queuing. Police are investigating a collision in which a car struck a house in Halstead. Officers say a Ford Focus and a VW Transporter collided on Sunday morning with the Focus hitting a building on Head Street causing structural damage. Nobody was injured. Gary Lineker says he can't wait to get back to match of the day on Saturday after resolving a dispute with the BBC about comments he made regarding the government's new asylum policy. The presenter was taken off air for a tweet in which he compared the language in Rishi Sunak's migrant plans to 1930s Germany. Many other pundits and commentators pulled out of BBC shows in solidarity causing chaos in the BBC schedules. Oh. The corporation's director general, Tim Davey, released a statement this morning announcing Mr Lineker's return. Charlotte Gallagher's been looking at it. No apology to Gary Lineker himself, but a general apology from Tim Davey about what he calls a difficult period. There's going to be a review led by an independent expert on current social media guidelines, particularly how they refer to freelancers outside news and current affairs. And Tim Davey also acknowledged that there was perhaps a potential for confusion in the current social media guidelines. But interestingly, he also said that while this review is taking place, the current social media guidelines will still be there. The weather for Essex this afternoon brings a mix of variable cloud and sunny spells while staying mostly dry. We can't rule out the odd shower. Strong southwesterly winds. Tonight, increasingly cloudy as a band of rain moves in from the northwest with lows of three degrees. And that's the latest to BBC Essex News. Thank you, Richard. The sound. The sound of Essex. Together, we can make a difference. BBC. BBC Essex. It's time for this, the final hour of the programme. We have a lot of time for the chat in the first part of the programme. We have a lot of time for music in the final part. You have to work out the year we go back in time to twice. So we do it one before 1.30 and we do another one between 1.30 and 2. And there's a trivia question in there as well just to keep you on your toes. So point for the year, point for the trivia question uh, before 1.30 and the same again between 1.30 and 2. Uh, we reminisce... Let me know what you're getting up to in this year, why you know it is the year in question, and it also just gets your brain thinking. I quite like it. Sometimes people, well, I, I know roughly what it is. I can have a genuine guess, genuine guess, see if you can get the year bang on. Why is more rewarding if you do get it right? Uh, we start today with a great one from Barry White, but what's the year? This did well in the charts, please.
we've gone back in time to please 0800 triple run 4041 is the number to call do you remember Gallagher and Lyle?
getting back to normal now and the recovery work is clear in the Homesdale Tunnel and for the first time since I came on air I cannot see any delays I'll say that just over by the Dartford Crossing it does look quite busy um, we had reports of the uh, QE2 bridge being down to two lanes because of the high winds so I can see queues on both sides oh of the River Thames for the Dartford Crossing both tunnel and the QE2 bridge so it's still busy on the A13 heading in the eastbound stretch as well. This, uh, this on the outskirts of Avery, very close to the M25 junction. Uh, A13 Wennington Way, which was the earlier probably due to the broken down lorry, that has eased on the eastbound stretch. Still quite busy in and around Raynham though. Uh, but the only time you're going to hit a queue on the A13 eastbound now is rather than Wennington, just before you get to the M25. Um, elsewhere, usual delays in and around Chelmsford, Braintree, and Colchester, but nothing's going to hold you up for too long. I can see it looking a bit busy um, heading northbound on the A12 just as you come off at the RB interchange. Uh, I can see a short queue there and then on the trunk road, the A120, um, heading in the uh, eastbound stretch. I can see some cues there. Keep an eye on that. Your next update's at 1.45. Listen to BBC Essex wherever you are on your FM or digital radio. Download the BBC Sounds app. Turn on your TV. We're on Freeview, channel 734. Or ask your smart speaker to play BBC Essex. from Manchester United and Derby County with five games remaining. QPR in the title race. Uh, Colchester and Southend were both battling relegation in the third division and Ferrari's Nicky Lauda finished first at the South African Grand Prix in this year. Open all hours, debuted on the BBC as we moved to screen. Uh, the return of the Pink Panther hit the big screen as did the man who fell to earth starring David Bowie as an alien. We said hello in this year to the boys' own singer Stephen Gately, Supergrass frontman Gaz Coombs, TV presenter Emma Willis, and Sir Chris Hoy. It was a good year. And we wave goodbye to the Winnie the Pooh illustrator E.H. Shepherd. What's the year, please? Text out. Start your message with the word Essex. Let's get back to the charts. With ABBA, when did Fernando do well? 